Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Mach-E vlog. Today we're gonna take a look at another EV charger for your Mach-E or other EV. This one is from Top Don, and we're gonna take a look at it now. So let's go. So before we begin, I'm gonna let you know that uh, they did send us this unit to evaluate for free. So we did get that and we do use affiliate codes, which sometimes we have discount affiliate codes. So check the description down below for uh, if you wanna buy this uh, after we're done with the review. But first we're gonna take a look at what comes in the box and tell you a little bit about it. It is NEMA 4 rated, which means it can be mounted indoor and outdoor within reasonable temperatures. If you're, you know, for example, in Phoenix, you wouldn't want to mount it out in the sun uh, when it's 140 degrees in the sunlight, that won't work. Um, and the same thing if you're in Minnesota, if you're outside and it's negative, you know, 40 degrees, you may have issues. But for most of us, this should work well. And it isn't like waterproof, but it is very water resistant, which is the NEMA 4 standard. It mounts to, or plugs into a standard NEMA 1450 plug. It's up to a 40 amp charger. And one of the cool things, and we'll go into this later, is you can adjust it via the app in one amp increments from six amps all the way up to 40 amps. It has a 16 foot cable, which is a little bit shorter than some other brands, which may be good or bad. Sometimes if your cable is really long, it means you just have a lot of extra cable to deal with and it makes it like heavier as well. Um, you'll see when we plug it in here in this temporary setup, it's a bit at the, the, the limit of the 16 foot cable, but you know, as long as that's within your, your realm, that's great. It has a holster uh, that you can use to mount, uh, to plug the J1772 connector in on the wall to store it out of the way. And we have a mounting bracket that they provide us. So this basically would mount on the wall and then, whoop, actually that way, and then you would, uh, there we go, we'll get it right one of these days. Uh, slide that on, it has a couple of screws to secure it to the wall. Uh, very easy setup, we're not doing this. We're actually at a friend's house because we're in a temporary living situation, so we can't mount it at home and we don't wanna mount it to our friend's wall and then leave them holes in the wall once we're, once we're done. On the outside of the unit, of course, we have some basic status indicators. We have the power uh, indicator. Of course, I have it plugged in right now. That'll let us know that it's charging. The exclamation point will, of course, if there's a, an issue, will light up and let you know that it, there's an issue. And it is UL uh, listed, uh, tested, which means, you know, if it detects like any issues with under voltage or over voltage or a short, it will light that up. Or if there's no power on it, you got a real big problem. Uh, and then of course the Wi-Fi light down at the end, which we haven't hooked it up with Wi-Fi. This is another smart charger. So it, it does have an app and within the app, there are a lot of options. There's actually a multi-user setup so you can have different people um, have accounts to do their charging, but you can also uh, like sort of figure out how much your electricity costs and how much gas costs around where you're at. So you can sort of see like how much your savings are going to add up while just using your EV. And of course, keep track of your actual charging cost throughout the month and year to charge your EV, whether it's a Mach-E or, or other car. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. It's supposedly very easy on the iPhone. Let me launch the app. And it's asking US version or EU version, if you don't know slightly different standards. The US version is the J1772, so I'm gonna select that. It wants me to create a username and password, so I will do that, and I'll blur all this out, or most of it at least. After I register, of course, now I need to log in. As soon as I log in, it's asking to find a charger, so we're gonna to try to do that. And we're gonna to try to connect to Wi-Fi. One tap Wi-Fi setup is available if you have an iPhone, so we're gonna try that. Even though it was like one touch, it's actually multiple touches because I had to enter in the Wi-Fi password, but we're gonna give this a try now. And what it's actually doing is I entered in the Wi-Fi connection info here. It's gonna supposedly connect to the charger send that Wi-Fi info 
over to the charger and then have the charger connect to the home Wi-Fi network as well. And then it should be good to go. As it's doing its thing, I'll just mention that it comes with actually some fairly heavy duty mounting uh, screws to go into the wall. Uh, some of the other chargers that we reviewed had just like your normal drywall screws, um, which is okay, but this I feel is a lot more secure. I'm really glad that they included these with the charger so that it can be mounted very securely to your wall. And now it's sending the Wi-Fi information over to the charger. And the final step is it'll join the charger to the home Wi-Fi network. And it was moving slowly but now all of a sudden it finished the last 75% very quickly. We're gonna give this a name. Let's go ahead and type in Maki Vlog. And we're gonna hit confirm. It has a serial number, which I've blurred out. Not sure if that matters or not, but might as well blur it out just to be safe. Okay, and now it finished and the blue Wi-Fi light is on and the power light is on. So the, that's how it should be when we're not doing anything, it's just plugged in. And now we'll take a look at the app and go over some details. Um, one of the things I did mention is that you can change the maximum current going out. Uh, this is a 50 amp circuit, so it, the, the max that I would wanna do is 40 amps. But me personally, I don't need to charge that fast. And I believe the, the slower you charge, the better. So if what I'm gonna do right now, so I'm gonna click on current, I'm gonna select that down. Let's uh, select 20 amps. And as you can see, I was able to do one amp increments and I can schedule charging. Of course, in the Mach-E, you can set your own charging schedule. I like also setting one in the app itself. And so what, I, what I'll do is like, I'll try to set like the Mach-E to charge from midnight to 6 a.m., but I'll set the charger so that it's active from 11 a.m. to like 7, or 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And the reason I do that is like every once in a while, the Mach-E will glitch and not understand where it's at or, or whatnot. And it'll keep, it'll start charging outside of the window that I've designated in the car. But if I set it on the charger as well and give it a slightly bigger window, that ensures I'm not gonna be charging during the middle of the day or during peak hours that cost me more money. So that's a, you know, a nice feature to have is to be able to schedule it in the app as well as in the car. But I'm actually not gonna do that now because we want to just charge. As you can see, this cable is 16 feet. So even though I'm sort of pulled in and close to where the charger's located, it is stretching to be a little bit uh, at the limit of where this would be. If I had it mounted on the wall, I'm not sure I would be able to reach that. So something just to keep in mind, make sure you have adequate space to install it. And we're gonna go ahead and plug in. And I'm gonna, first of all, let me make sure my screen recording is going. So I plugged in, so it says it's ready. And because I don't have a schedule, it's not doing anything right now. I'm gonna hit charge now. It's gonna start charging. And it looks like it's gonna start now. The ring of charging has started on the Mach-E. I'm actually at a high state of charge at about 85%, so I'm not gonna really charge for long, but this is really neat. Like I can actually see that it's going 0.3 kilowatts right now. Current, I'm at two amps. I set it for 20 amps, so it should go up a little bit higher. It's showing me that it's 240 volt, 243 volts. And now it just increased. I think it was just sort of like doing its own checks. Everything is okay. And then at the one minute mark, I think it was, it went up to 20 amps, which is what I set it at here in the, the app. And we're not gonna do a long charge for hours and hours, but you can see already it's been charging for three minutes and it's calculating that I already added 0.16 kilowatt hours and added 0.46 miles of range in that short time. Um, again, if you need to, you can charge up to 40 amps on this charger. That's If you need to add that amount of range every night, that's great. Uh, or you can like keep reducing it down lower and lower. Uh, I generally do like about 32 amps. I wanted to test it out. I set it at 20 amps and it's working perfectly. If I want to track the charging history, 
I can go over here, I can set what my utility rate is. So we're gonna say currency is dollars. Cost of gas right now, we'll just say 350, which is actually sort of low. Uh, an equivalent gas powered car, like my old car that I traded in, got 28 miles of gas, uh, 28 miles per gallon of gas. And electricity, now this one only is going at a set rate. If we charge at night, we're at about 15 cents per kilowatt hour, we'll say. Uh, it doesn't like sort of differentiate if you're charging at night or during the day if you have time of use. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna hit save. And then now it's gonna keep a log of how much, you know, not only is it costing me to charge, but comparing this to a car with about average gas prices, as well as, you know, what my, you know, miles per gallon efficiency was on my old gas car. So we are just starting out. It's not gonna really track much data, but very cool that you can come back in here and take a look at this at the end of the month or, or whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna let this finish charging just for a little bit. Like I said, we don't really need a charge, but overall, I like the charger. The cable is a little bit shorter than I would want for my garage, but depending on where it is, it might be a perfect link for you. I like the fact that it can be mounted outdoors. It's a decently priced charger. I believe on Amazon right now, it's about $550. They do run some sales where I've seen it as low as 500, so keep a watch out for that. Check again in the description. We may have some discount codes down there. If we can get them, we'll put them down there. We'll keep those updated as well, like if there's any sales coming up or anything like that. Um, if you are not familiar with Top Don and you're worried about like where is this coming, company coming from, they are not like a lot of the other charging companies where they, they make public chargers and now they're gonna make a home charger. They make automotive equipment and test equipment, jump starters, that type of thing. So they're in the automotive world and now they're branching out into the EV world and this is their first EV charger. So I believe that they're a pretty solid company, have a fairly good reputation. If you look at their other products, they're just entering the EV world and I'm excited by this. I'm liking the app and all the features that are in the app including you know, scheduling, keeping track of what your costs are, estimating how much it would save you uh, charging versus you know, driving a gas car. So a lot of nice little features that are in the app. And overall, I think the charger is a fairly good buy and I could recommend it with no reservations. Of course, this is just our first initial impression of it. We just did a quick charge with it. Very, fairly easy setup. We had a little bit of a hiccup, but overall, fairly easy to set this up and get it going. And the last thing to do is to hit stop charging. I noticed on the screen, by the way, like at first I couldn't figure out how to stop charging. You just have to scroll down. It's not big enough to fit on my screen. I hit stop charging and I heard that click. I heard this click. Everything is done. I can unplug and we are pretty much good. Ugh. A little bit tight there. Sometimes these get a little bit tight. Some people will add a little bit of like, uh, you know, lubricant so that it's easier to plug in and out. This doesn't need that. It's just a little bit snug on that first couple of times you you probably plug it in, but it's pretty pretty nice, good, firm connection. It also has a little connector here or cover here that I forgot to mention. I like having that. But overall, what do you guys think? Is this a charger that you may be considering? If so, like I said, check out the description down below. If you have any questions about the charger, let me know and I'll contact Top Don or you can contact them yourself. But thanks for watching, and if you have other products that you want us to check out, just let us know, and we'll do our best to get a hold of them and check them out. Just remember <laughs> that whatever you drive, or whoever is filming or using their hand to be silly, enjoy the ride. Bye.